Hello, my name is CarX82 and welcome back to a, another tutorial. Today I'm going to be going over the different tiers of circuits. Uh, starting out, there is a whole lot of circuits. As you can see, I have laid them out by tier and it can be quite confusing. Now, starting out, basically, there is either three circuits or four circuits per tier. Um, a couple of the later ones only have one or two. Um, but in general, there are multiple circuits per tier, and as you go up the chain, farther up the circuit chain, they get, they require less resources, but they require sometimes more difficult resources and more power. Um, but kind of quickly going over some of these, the basic circuit is going to be the very first one you're going to get. So if we take a look at that. It's going to require two resistors, two vacuum tubes, a circuit board, but all this stuff is very basic. Um, resources, a steel plate, resistors, or just some paper, coal, copper wire, all basic, easy to produce stuff, but it is quite manually intensive trying to create this because you got to do your wires and you got to do the farming paper, all sorts. So you're going to want to move up as soon as you can to the next. Uh, tier in the the circuit, the different tiers. There's multiple tiers within each tier. So if you want to get move up to the integrated circuit, you're going to use your circuit assembler here. And this only uses a few ingredients, and they're easier to make. So copper wire is easy to make. The Fenelux circuit board is pretty easy to make. Just some wood chippings and a mold. You can either use glue or bisphenol, whichever you prefer. As we can see, glue gets you one. This gets you four. But overall, easier to make than this, just because the ingredients that it requires are easier to mass produce. So it's a little less manual. And then if we move up to the microprocessor, this one gets four per recipe. So requires like half a copper wire each. It only requires one circuit board for four, and then it requires one of each. So it's going to be cheaper in the long run. But if we look at this, it's actually going to require MV power. So you're going to have to upgrade your circuit assembler before you're able to use the microprocessor, but it's something to work towards. Now, if we look at the MV, once again, the good electronic circuits are going to require four of the previous circuit. Usually, the, as you go up the chain, they're going to require the circuits from before. This one's a bit of an outlier. Um, but in general, it's going to require, like, the circuit's going to require these. The circuit's going to require this. These are going to require the previous kind of circuits. So what you're going to want to do is, as we move up, like I said, the good electronic circuit, this requires four of the previous, so we know how manually intensive that is to create. So you're going to want to get away from that circuit as soon as you can into the good integrated circuit, which you can make in the circuit assembler, LV power, and now if we look at this, it only requires a board, four resistors, uh, eight electron wires, and then three of the previous circuits. So the previous circuit requires, you know, copper, a board, not too difficult resources to get. And this requires three of them. So this circuit is actually quite resource intensive just because you require three of the previous. But if we move up again, as we can see, like I said, this one's a bit of an outlier microprocessor. But if we look at this, there is no previous circuit uh, in this line. So this is going to mean this is not going to require the previous circuit to make. If we look at it, it doesn't. But it does require kind of upgraded infrastructure, so it's going to require an MV circuit assembler, and it's going to require better circuit boards, which you're going to need to be getting polyethylene, and red OLA wire, some of these transistors. Again, you're going to need polyethylene, tin foil, silicon plates. So the resources are definitely upgraded, but they're less. You're going to need less of them. And once you get the infrastructure up that can produce these, it's going to be much easier to be making these circuits as opposed to the, the tier behind. 
And once again, if we move up, so we're going to look at this. Oh, that one requires, there's two circuits behind it. So if we look at this advanced circuit, which is going to be the HV, it's going to require two of these, which require three of these. So if we're looking at this, this is going to require two and three. So you're going to require, for every one of these, you're going to require six of the previous circuit. So that is quite a lot of resources. If we think about that, so it, the HV circuit, which you can make on the LV power, but it's going to require six of these. And then, so that has quite a lot of resources. So you're going to want to move up as soon as you can. It's a pretty good goal to be producing the best circuits on the tier that you want. So now if we look at this, the HV, if we look at this processor, we can see that there's only one circuit behind it. There isn't two, so it's probably going to require two or three of these. If we take a look, it does. It requires two of these. But once again, these resources are quite intense. Not hard to make, but it requires a lot of them. So 12 fine alloy wire, that's three ingots of red alloy. It's going to require four of those, four of those. And then you're going to have to make the previous one, which requires its own thing. So you're going to want to get to the nanoprocessor, which is the top tier of the HV line. But if we look at this, it's going to jump up in resources needed. So the, the nanoprocessor is going to require this nano component, but this is going to require chemical reactors, and this is actually going to require an EV line to make this nano component. These can all be made on MV, but this one is actually going to be your, uh, this is going to be the gate for this tier. So you're not going to be able to make this for quite a while, but once you start getting the infrastructure up, you're going to be wanting to go for this. To, if you want to make an HV machine, you're going to be wanting to use this. And as we move up this line, as we can see, I'm not going to go through every single recipe, but it's basically much of the same. The, re the workstations are going to require three of this, which is going to require two of the one from before. So as we work up our way, it's going to require the, if we look at the mainframe, which is the highest uh, in the line. If we look at this, the mainframe is kind of the end. So if we look at this one, going to require four workstations. We're going to require three of these, which can require two of those. So if we think about four, 12, one mainframe is going to require 24 of these circuits. So it's quite difficult to make, but you can make it at the, a much lower tier. So this one is IV, but you can actually make it at AV, uh, AV power, HV, I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, so as I said, you're going to want to start upgrading your processing chains to get the highest tier you possibly can for the whichever kind of circuits you're going to be wanting to stay on here. So if you're going to be wanting to produce a lot of HV machines, you're going to want to work towards this nanoprocessor as soon as you can because it won't require anything below it. Uh, but like I said, it's going to require... Uh, this one is actually going to require EV power. So it is something to work towards. And if we look at this, these are actually colored. The only, if this was, this should be like a yellow, this like nano, this icon, this should be a yellow one. It would make it a little easier to understand. So we have the different lines. This is the processor line. This is the nano processor, quantum processor, crystal processor, lower processor. And as you're going up the lines, you're going to be using these mainframes usually to produce the circuit assembly machines. Now, to get into this is a little more complicated with the circuit assembly machine. So if we look at this basic, which is going to be LV power, uses LV. This one actually requires MV circuits. 
we look at this one, this is the MV circuit assembly machine. This requires HV circuits and so on and so forth. So every circuit assembly machine, when you want to move up the tier, it's actually going to require circuits from the, the machine above. So the basic one is going to require one of these. doesn't matter which one you do, but it's going to require that circuit. And the MV one is going to require something from the HV line. And if we look at these, all these circuits are interchangeable. So if we look at, if we want to produce the, let's say, HV circuit assembler, that's going to require one of these, quantum workstation or nanoprocessor. So we got to look at which one can we produce. If we're on the HV line, we have HV power, you know, we're producing the stainless steel. Which one of these can we produce that uses HV power? Can we do the quantum processor? No, we can't do that. It uses EV power. What about this nanoprocessor? Nope, this uses EV power as well. Not as much, but it uses EV power. But the workstation here, the workstation does use MV power. So what you're gonna use basically do for the circuits as you're going up the lines, you're going to be using the, the bottom tier of this line to create the circuit assembler, but then you can use that to create uh, more difficult um, circuits in the line from before. So usually you want to get the circuit assembler machine almost kind of as soon as you're entering that age. So if you're moving into the HV age, producing HV power, you got, you know, your turbo diesel generators or your turbo steam generators. Um, you're going to want to kind of work towards the advanced circuit assembly machine so you can start making the easier circuits as you go up the line. And then as we look at the each tier, so the nanoprocessor line, quantum processor line, crystal processor line. The very first circuit in the set, like if this is a set, usually we has multiple recipes. So this one, you're going to need EV power, extreme voltage. But there's also another recipe. And if we look at this, this uses only two fine electron wires, a circuit board, and this chip. This chip requires quite higher tier. It uses EVs. You're going to need EV precision. And you're actually going to need this, which needs EV power. So it's quite a lot more difficult to make, but it uses a heck of a lot less um, resources, but it requires a whole lot of power. So this is almost two tiers up. This is EV. And this is LUV power. This is ludicrous voltage. And then if we look at the quantum processor, the same. There's the, the basic uh, recipe. Then there is a more expensive recipe. And it uses a lot more power. So in general, you're going to want to move up the lines, like I said, multiple times kind of as soon as you can because they require less and less resources. So yeah, if you're on the IV, if you want to be producing the insane voltage machines, yeah, you can use mainframes for it. Say you want to do an IV furnace because it's faster. It has a, that's probably a bad one. It has a I can't remember the name of it. But anyway, if you look at the, say, the molecular disintegrator, which is the electrolyzer, you can use any of these circuits. Yeah, you can use the mainframe. But like I said, you're going to be crafting all these circuits to use this. Or you're going to want to move up the line of circuits here.
So like if we look at the quantum line, this uses two of those and much cheaper than the mainframe. But the mainframe usually gets you into the next tier of circuits. Usually you're going to want to use the mainframe. Like I said, to build the circuit machine of that tier. But in general, that is basically how the circuits work. Um, it makes it a little easier to see if you have them visualized like this. But hopefully that explained a little bit. Um, it is still quite confusing if you don't know how the different tiers work. Um, but like I said, if you see it kind of visualized out, hopefully it'll make that a bit easier. But anyway, that's going to be it for today. So thanks for watching. And have a good one.